Hello, everyone, and welcome to this live webinar. We will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of Ranorex versus Selenium WebDriver. So I'd just like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Jay, or Jason Branham, and some of you probably uh, have had the pleasure of working with me during your Ranorex evaluation. I'm a, a sales engineer here at Ranorex. Uh, been with the company for quite a long time, and I'm happy to, uh, honored to be your host today and presenting this topic. I'm not alone, by the way, so there are some Ranorex engineers as well uh, on the line, and they're going to be polling questions in the that questions and answers panel. So please feel free, uh, whenever a question pops up, to uh, just go ahead and use that panel and ask away. Uh, a Ranorex engineer will be there to answer the question for you. And we'll also, uh, at the end, of course, have time for Q&A so that we can uh, bring up some of the better questions, let's say. So. Thanks for joining, and uh, I'll go ahead and get myself off the screen here. I don't want to distract anyone with my handsome face there. And uh, let's kick it off. So I'm going to uh, start with a little introduction here, just letting you know basically what our agenda is for today. The majority of this time will be spent in the live demo. Then we'll have a uh, summary slide uh, just at the end there, and as I mentioned, a Q&A section as well. Oh, my slideshow decided to stop working. There we go. So a quick introduction here. Um, I have bumped this level up to the intermediate uh, just because we're going to be showing a lot of selenium today, and that can get quite technical. That's kind of the whole point of this, this uh, discussion, actually. So uh, I have bumped that up to be kind of like an intermediate level. So if you've never seen selenium before, honestly, there might be some things in here that uh, are a bit confusing, but I'll try to uh, I'll try to make it as easy to understand as I can. Uh, we will take approximately 60 minutes. I imagine, you know, 45 or so of that's going to be the live demo and uh, definitely some time for Q&A. So let's get right into the live demo. First, I want to talk about what we're going to learn today. Uh, so the idea, right, is Ranorex versus Selenium WebDriver. And I, I want to take you through the perspective of a new user. All right, some of you who uh, you know have seen my webinars or worked with me or maybe even taken training with me know that I'm not big on slides. So this presentation is not going to be a lot of slides. We're going to get right into uh, some hands-on stuff. And I'm basically going to walk you through the perspective of a new user using Ranorex and using Selenium uh, and what, what they kind of go through. So as this evolves, we'll, we'll basically start off with just a quick overview of both uh, Selenium and Ranorex Studio, show you how uh, the workflow would go for a new user. We'll then talk about a very important topic, which is identifying UI elements. Uh, both Ranorex and Selenium, right, are automation tools uh, that work in what's called an object-based way. So identifying UI elements is probably the most important topic uh, of any tool that you're looking at, any solution that you're looking for, um, for automation. Uh, so we're gonna spend some good time in there and talk about, you know, basically how Selenium does it a little differently than Ranorex and what are the pros and cons. Uh, then we'll start introducing some of the things that, you know, really justify the purchase of a Ranorex license, which uh, are things like, you know, basically the framework we give you. Um, now, there's multiple parts to that framework, um, and, and one of the most important parts is what we call our object repository. So this is not something you get from Selenium. It's uh, something that comes out of the box with Ranorex, though, and I'm going to talk about how important that is, um, especially from a maintenance perspective, right, test maintenance We'll then do a quick example with data-driven testing. I'll show you how easy it is to set up a data-driven test in Ranorex. We'll then discuss how it works in Selenium. Honestly, we won't have time to implement it because it is quite a lot of work. Uh, you'll find that is kind of the case for most of these topics, actually. So uh, we'll discuss the uh, different approaches there. And lastly, another important part of any testing framework is reporting. Obviously, we have to you know, prove we did something, right? So these are how we're gonna basically navigate through this discussion. And uh, as mentioned, it's gonna be very hands-on. I have one cheesy slide to show though, because I wanna keep, uh, you know, basically at the front of your mind that the real discussion here, right, the value proposition of Ranorex is that time is money. So, you know, right off the bat to compare the two, Ranorex is a commercial tool, Selenium is open source. Uh, so Selenium has the advantage of being free, uh, but keep in mind, right, that this time that you take developing your automation isn't exactly free. Right? If you have a test automation architect and maybe some test automation engineers, uh, you know, they're, they're not cheap uh, hires. And uh, the more time they have to spend, you know, researching things or figuring out how things work, uh, you know, that's lost, that's lost revenue basically at the end of the day. 
I'll go ahead and share my screen here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a simple scenario. Um, here's here's the background. I'm a I'm a tester at Dropbox. Okay, just to pick a name out of a hat here. And we need to basically test the functionality of our website. Right. Um, Selenium is a, a web testing tool. Ranrex, on the other hand, can actually do all three. It can do web, desktop, or mobile. But for today, we're going to concentrate on web. So I need to do a scenario basically where let's start with something really simple here. I just want to make sure that I can log into Dropbox and I'm able to log out. A very simple smoke test, if you will. And I'm going to start doing that um, from the Selenium approach. Now, to be fair, right, I just mentioned Selenium is a developer tool. So you have to be a coder, a very strong coder at that to really be successful with it. However, they do offer a, um, a codeless uh, recorder. Uh, now, it is still generating code at the end of the day, but you know, to compare apples to apples, uh, Ranrex is also codeless. Uh, let's give Selenium a, a little benefit of the doubt here and, and let them, uh, let's use their codeless approach to at least get things kicked off here. Now, I've done a lot of legwork already, by the way, so um, if we're talking about day one productivity here, I've already spent many, many hours you know, downloading the IDE that I'm going to use for Selenium, downloading all the dependencies, um, you know, the different driver versions of the browsers, installing Selenium itself. I mean, there's a lot of uh, legwork that goes into that. So uh, just know that I've spent the time already. Um, so we're ready to get started here. But that is something that, you know, your first day uh, with implementing Selenium, maybe even your first week, is going to be a lot of infrastructure, uh, right? A lot of building out and, and basically installing and, and downloading uh, things. So I've already gone ahead and done all that for you, so we're giving them a fair shake here. I'm going to open up Selenium IDE, another thing you have to install separately, which is uh, basically a plug-in to the Firefox browser. So I can only uh, use the Firefox browser to record my test. Go ahead and open that up. And I'm going to say, let's create a new test and a new project. So we're starting completely from scratch here. My project name will be Dropbox Test. My website is going to be dropbox.com. So the actual commercial site, right, the production site. And I'm going to go ahead and start recording. So what Selenium IDE will do is, um, it should anyway, record any interaction I make with my website now. So you get this little, um, you know, little message down there. It's kind of a weird uh, format, but you see that Selenium IDE is recording. So uh, I just have to basically trust that anything I do is going to be captured here. So let's start with a, a sign-in. And I'll go ahead and click on the email field here. Type in my credentials and then my password as well. So click the password field, type in my password. I don't want it to remember me, just a little automation trick there. I don't want to have persistent values and then sign in. Okay, so I mentioned this is a very, very basic test. Um, we're just going to do a smoke test basically. Can I log in? Can I log out? Okay, so here we are logged in. Now I'd like to be able maybe to create an, an action which verifies that I was able to log in, but there's no easy way to do that from the uh, Selenium recorder here. I'd have to add it later. Uh, so for now, I'll just stick with uh, logging out. So I'm gonna go to the little username button there and click sign out. Okay, it doesn't get much simpler than that, um, but what we'll see is that we're gonna have a little bit of trouble. So let's close the uh, browser here. Now at the moment, right, I'm, I'm using the codeless approach and all I've really got here is um, some steps, right? Some steps that were recorded and I'm able to play those back here in the Selenium IDE by going to this run current test button. Gotta stop recording first, obviously. And you know, this is gonna be my login logout test. That sounds like a good name for it. Okay, now let's give it a run. I'll go ahead and close, uh, make sure Firefox is closed here. Oh, that's the only one open, perfect. And let's run. So preparing to run your test.
Yeah, and I've had this happen a couple times now where it basically freezes up. Um, of course, when you go live here, that's what happens. I had some success earlier by changing the execution speed. So already you're kind of seeing the flakiness here. <laughs> Let me go ahead and run again with a, a slower speed there, and hopefully that. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Now it's trying to move it all over my screen here, so let's bring it back up. And you see, the, uh, you can see there that it clicked the sign-in button. So we uh, did have that step work for us, and now we're just wanting to log in, basically. Now I'm going to spare you the uh, the surprise here. Uh, I know that it's not going to find my fields here, my email or password field. So basically, um, you know, the takeaway there is that I can record a test, sure. Um, when it comes to running that test back, it appears to be a bit flaky. So we had one hour, one uh, error where it wouldn't kick off. And now it's basically searching for uh, my email field and it's not able to find it. So eventually it's gonna time out here and basically be a failure. Now, record and playback kind of has a bad rap, right? Uh, and I think that's mostly due to Selenium, to be honest. Uh, the, the Selenium recorder through the Selenium IDE is pretty flaky, and it, it kind of gives all the other tools in the in the industry, you know, a, a bad taste. It puts a bad taste in the mouth when you hear the word recorder. Uh, so there you go. We see that we failed. Now, I need to troubleshoot and fix this. But for now, we're going to leave it at that. And I am going to go ahead and jump in and do the same thing in Ranorex. So let's go ahead and boot up Ranorex Studio here. If you haven't already downloaded the trial, we do have a fully functioning, uh, fully functioning, 30-day trial. So everything I do here today, you can do in that trial version as well. And this is just a, a client install, right? So as opposed to having to download an IDE, having to install different dependencies, having to install different drivers for the different browsers, uh, I have everything in one download, right? To, to install Ranorex. It really is as simple as uh, going to our website, clicking uh, download, and running the install. Okay, so that will give you Ranorex Studio, and that has everything you need. Uh, so let's talk about the start page here. Some good resources available to you. By the way, there's a nice uh, blog that we just came out with that's very related to this. All right, five reasons to choose a vendor-based tool for automation. So uh, highly relevant. Check that out if, uh, if you want. I'm going to create a new solution. So we do use a lot of the same vocabulary as Selenium. In Ranorex, you are creating a solution. And it asks me, what type of application do I want to work with first? So as mentioned, unlike Selenium WebDriver, I can automate desktop applications, web applications, or even mobile. And I could do all three in the very same test, which we'll actually do later in our scenario here. So, uh, But I'm going to choose web for now. That's where we're going to start anyway. And I'll give it the same name. This is going to be my uh, Dropbox test. Same name I gave it in Selenium there. And hit continue. All right, I also have to point it to the appropriate URL. I already have it in my history, though. And I could choose whatever browser I want to record with. So this is totally your choice. Every test you create, every web test you create in Ranorex is going to be cross-browser compatible. So this is literally just up to you uh, which, you know, which browser you prefer to record with. And I'm going to have Ranrex launch that for me since it's not already open. Hit continue. This last option here, whitelisting, just a quick explanation of it. Do I want Ranrex to only focus on my web test, or do I want Ranrex to basically be able to see any type of UI I put in front of it? So I'm going to choose to not use whitelisting here because we will actually do a little bit of desktop. It's going to be interesting, I promise. Uh, it is web related, so you know I'm not switching to desktop uh, in general. But I'm going to choose do not use whitelisting. I want Ranorex to see everything I put in front of it. So let's continue and let's finish. Okay, and once this opens up, you're going to see what Ranorex gives you here, which is a full blown framework. Okay, we have what's called our test suite view in the middle here. And this is basically where you're going to define the execution of your test. So we have a test suite uh, component into this framework. 
we can organize tests, we can uh, choose to run some and not others, right? Anything you, anything you would want from an, uh, an execution engine. Okay, we also have a keyword driven framework in here as well in the form of what we call modules. As you see, we have a, a test suite with a test case in it for now. And inside that test case, we have three modules, open browser, which, you know, uh, assumptively opens my website up, dropbox.com, recording one, which does nothing yet, and close browser, which is gonna close my website. So I already have uh, open and close, all right? My, uh, my Dropbox is open here. Let's go ahead and maximize it. And I'm basically gonna do the same thing I did in, in uh, Selenium. I'm gonna go into recording one, our module here, and I'm gonna hit record to start adding steps. So let's hit record here. Now, unlike Selenium IDE, I do get a nice little toolbar down there that's gonna tell me you know, what I'm creating as I'm creating it. A nice, uh, another nice you know, basic quality of life feature is that when I hover around here, everything I hover above is getting this individual red border. That lets me know that RanRx is seeing that object, basically. So I don't have to guess if I'm clicking on the right thing or not. I'll see the red border letting me know. So let's do the same uh, scenario here. I click sign in. I'm then gonna click on the email field. Get the focus in there. The website seems to be still loading some things. There we go. And we're gonna type in our credentials. All right, I'm gonna click on the password field. and type in my password. Now you'll be able to see everything I'm doing here is uh, able to be reviewed in my little recorder toolbar. So I know, you know, basically what I'm doing as I'm doing it. If I make a misclick, I can even delete the action in real time. So if I click something accidentally, I don't want that to be part of my steps. I have that option. Let's uncheck remember me. And let's click sign in. Once I'm all signed in here, uh, you know, unlike Selenium, I can create a validation step here if I want to, to make sure basically that, you know, I see the home page here. So let's uh, go down here to our toolbar and click validate. This is how you'll create your, you know, some tools call them checkpoints, some call them assertions. Uh, Ranorex, we call them validations. You know, maybe if I just wanna make sure that the home, uh, you know, header there appears, I can click validate, click that object. You'll get a quick preview basically of how our tool is working here. All right, we're working through the DOM or document object model, just like Selenium does. There's my object, that's all I care about is did I get the right object here? Looks like I did. And I just wanna check that that exists. All right, if I need to check some specific property about it, I can. You know, If I wanna be really specific, maybe I could check the inner text, for example, make sure it says home. Uh, but honestly, just checking that it, it exists is good enough for me. So I'll go ahead and click okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sign out. So go here to the user. Give it a click. Go down to that sign out button, wait for that red border and give it a click. Here we go, so roughly the same 10 steps there. But as we see, we'll play it back and we'll get uh, much better results. So I'm gonna run this test back. Uh, this is my test case, right? I, I need to do some cleanup here, but for now, let's just make sure it works. And let's give it a run. All right, now what you'll see here, what we're actually running, what your RanRx test is at the end of the day is nothing more than an executable file. So you see that dropbox test.exe there on the command prompt window. 
Now this means your test is incredibly portable, very scalable. You know, basically I can give this EXE to any machine, any Windows machine, and, and have it run my test. So I don't need to rely on any kind of, uh, you know, separate third-party framework or anything like that. You know, it, it is its own artifact, so to speak. And I think I clicked something strange there, some nav tag. I don't remember clicking on that. Let me quickly uh, check my test here. <laughs> that step, I don't remember seeing. Okay, so yes, uh, this happens, right? Um, I clicked maybe a little too early and captured the uh, wrong field. Let me show you how easy it is to quickly uh, fix that. I can record from here. Go to the field I really want and capture it. Always wait for that red border. I probably just did it a little too quickly before that red border appeared. And stop again. That's what I want to see, the object login email. So let me quickly clean that up. Again, the uh, these are what the things that happen in a live demo, of course. <laughs> Let's give it a run there. So always take your time while recording. Uh, really, no matter what tool you, you're planning to use, that's a good idea. If you try to go too fast, you might get a, a misstep. Your test will always play back as quickly as it can in RANREX, so I really stress that uh, during recording, you know, make sure to take your time. Recording faster isn't going to make your test faster, basically. And you'll notice that, actually. If you look down at the bottom right there as the test is running, it's always searching for your objects before it interacts with them. So here it's searching for the sign-in. Uh, that's great. Timing is a huge, uh, can be a huge issue with automation. Uh, and Randorex does it out of the box. It's going to wait, you know, for the page to load, for the individual element to load. So even if it's a asynchronous element, let's say, you're going to have Randorex wait for it. And it's waiting for this page to finish loading as well. And then it interacts. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> My uh, key sequence there um, it needs to be an at. I probably should have checked that. Again, shame on me for typing too quickly. Let's put in the uh, exact value there. Expert at gmail.com. All right, third time's a charm, right? So I don't want to close Selenium yet. I want to just close the browser. We could stop the test run here because we have bad credentials. That would eventually time out, right? And you get your report basically showing what happened. So might as well show that while we have it. Now you get instant screenshots of what went wrong, when it went wrong. And you could easily tell from the screenshot, yep, I'm just typing in the wrong username. So let's uh, let's run that back one more time here. And the reason this test is going to work on Ranorex and not in Selenium, let's skip ahead a little bit here to save some time, uh, is that basically the uh, the object that the email field, the password field, those objects that we need to interact with are actually um, dynamic. So they change every time that the website changes or that any time you, you load the website for that matter. Let me help it along here because it was in the wrong responsive mode. So this email field, this password field are both dynamic. Um, we'll take a look at that here in a second and you'll see what I mean. But basically, when I recorded the test and then ran it back in Selenium, the properties of the object that Selenium was using had changed, and therefore, they basically broke. What Ranorex did is it automatically detected that dynamic nature. And really, that's the, the bread and butter of our tool. Uh, our laser focus when it comes to developing the product 
is to always maintain the best level of object recognition and to create an identification of those objects that is not going to break. So immediately because of that, uh, that functionality, we ignored the dynamic uh, portion of that particular object, let's say the email field, and therefore we're able to run back our test without any problems. So uh, one of the biggest you know, differences is that if you take a look, and I don't want to get too technical here, but if we take a look at the object here, login email, you can see how Ranarex is finding it based on its name. Okay, so it, it used the name property. Now, normally it would use ID, but the algorithm, and it's a very smart algorithm uh, that creates this Ranarex path, very smart as in it is uh, actually trained through machine learning to recognize different frameworks and things like that. It, it recognized that, hey, ID property here, it's got numbers, it's probably gonna be dynamic, so let's not use it. Let's use something else instead, the next best thing. Uh, so it's very, very intelligent, and like I said, that really is the bread and butter uh, of our intellectual property. And if we look back at the Selenium test, right, you could see that it is finding it based on ID. And you can even see it there, login, email, 3994359, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Anytime you see big numbers like that, uh, very, very high chance that it is dynamic. So we'd need to fix this object, basically. Okay, so that is um, one of the biggest uh, key differentiators between Ranarex and Selenium is the object recognition technology. Uh, again, that is our laser focus. We don't spread ourselves uh, too thin into anything else. Uh, that is the main area of development when it comes to Ranarex Studio. So, because it just has to work, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it just has to work. Now, um, there's a lot in the Ranarex framework we haven't talked about here yet. So, for example, uh, let's first start with the test suite uh, view here, right? I have open browser, I have recording one, I have closed browser. Well, recording one, I mentioned this is a keyword framework. Recording one isn't a very good keyword. Okay, so what I wanna do actually is come into recording one again, those 10 steps, and I'm just gonna separate them based on what they do, right? They separate these actions. So we have clicking sign in all the way to clicking the actual sign in button there. And then we validate that we see the home object. I'm gonna go ahead and take these eight actions, right click on them after selecting them all, and I'm gonna move them to their own recording module. Remember, that's like a keyword and that I'm going to call login, All right? I want to be able to use these steps again, basically. And I'm going to sum it all up by just calling it login for the module name. Okay, this is a huge, huge benefit over Selenium. So let's go back to recording one. What's left in recording one? We have just a click on the username and then sign out. Well, rather than uh, move that, I'm going to simply rename recording one the module to log out. Okay, these modules you create, again, just think of them like keywords, are completely reusable. And the reason that is helpful is that I can use them in other test cases, right? Right now I just have the one test case. Let's go ahead and make it one-to-one -one with uh, Selenium, right? We called it the login log out test case. And we need to, uh, you know, let's define it a little bit better here. So recording one got turned to log out. That needs to happen right before we close the application. And our logging in module that we created by separating those actions out needs to go in the meet, right in the middle. All right, so uh, the reason this is nice, right, is that if I wanna create another test case in my test suite here, and it's all done through the UI, which is quite nice. Maybe I wanna upload a document as my test. I'm no, I know I'm gonna need open browser. I know I'm gonna need log in. I know I'm gonna need log out at some point, And I know I'm gonna need close browser. So I'm completely reusing these modules in a new test case. So this is a really huge advantage. Uh, it is doable in Selenium, right? But you have to build that framework yourself. Um, so, Let's get into a little discussion on that. Uh, again, I gave it uh, an apples to apples comparison here by using the codeless approach in Selenium, using Selenium IDE. 
but I can't really just use this thing. I mean, if I just want to play it back from Selenium IDE over and over again, then fine. Right? And I, I can come in here, open it up, and press play. But if I really want to execute this thing outside of Selenium IDE, maybe I'm going to put it in CI CD tool, or maybe I just want to schedule it you know, via a task scheduler or a batch file or something, I can't just leave it as is. I need to actually export it from Selenium IDE and plug it into my own framework. Okay, so this is where a lot of the work comes into play. But let's go ahead and uh, let's export it as is. I know, again, it's not working right now, but we're going to export this test as is. And I'm going to export it into C Sharp. Now, that, that's one advantage uh, Selenium has over Ranorex. In Ranorex, you can code with C Sharp or VB.NET if you need to, right? You don't have to code. Uh, so we support the two .NET languages that are very ubiquitous. Uh, Selenium does support a few extras, right? It has Java, Python, Ruby. Uh, however, it, it's almost to a, a disadvantage, right? It's a double-edged sword. It's nice that it's open like that, but that means that when you need to find out how to do something, you're going to have to find out how to do it for your specific language. So it's very easy. Um, it's very common, let's say, to just type something into Google. You know, how do I create a data-driven framework in Ranorex? Or I'm sorry, in uh, Selenium, for example. And you're going to get a bunch of different answers, right? Uh, with different code bases, everyone has their own kind of uh, flavor of framework. Um, you know, again, it could be a disadvantage that it's so open because there is no standardized way of doing things, really. So let's go ahead and export it in C Sharp because I am going to need to uh, to plug it in to a framework. And that basically just export it as a class file. By the way, that export ability also requires quite a lot of installation, configuration, and dependency stuff on the operating system. Um, so I saved you the, the headache there. Uh, took a couple hours to get that working correctly. But there's my uh, .cs file, right? It's just a code file. Okay, so we talked about the object recognition being a problem right now, so I will need to fix that. And if we just take a quick peek at the code here, you can see uh, exactly you know, what it's doing. It's finding an object by ID and then clicking it. The problem is that this ID is dynamic. Okay, so I wanna get us real quick back to our slides just to show you that we just talked about a quick overview, right? a, a quick workflow in Ranorex Studio and Selenium WebDriver. And we also discussed the uh, the issue, right? The issue that Selenium has with identifying UI elements that I need to fix now. Uh, we didn't have that issue in Ranorex. It was smart enough to ignore the dynamic properties. Okay, so we're going to talk next about the object repository, okay, inside Ranorex. But again, um, I need to get this thing into a, a true test. So what do I need to do? I can't just run it like this. It's not going to work. It doesn't work that way. I need to plug it into some kind of framework. So let's go ahead and I'll boot up my IDE. Now I'm using the C Sharp uh, Selenium, so I'm gonna use Visual Studio. If you're using Java, you'd have to use you know, NetBeans or Eclipse or something like that. And I'm gonna create a new project of type in unit. Right, that's the, the testing framework I'm going with. And I'm just going to uh, yep, use the recent in unit type and give it the name you guessed it, Dropbox test. Let's create it. Now I can't just uh, plug this thing in right away. I'm gonna have to do some copy pasting. And if you have worked with Selenium, you already know that the majority of your time is gonna be spent copy pasting. Okay, and even so, before that, there's other things I have to do as well. For example, if I want this to be a Selenium test, I need to have the correct dependencies. Again, this is just one more place where things can go wrong. So let's uh, let's add a package here to our dependencies using manage new packages. And the, another issue I ran into here was that my package source was incorrect, so I had to fix that. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of moving parts that can break when you have all these third-party dependencies. I need to add Selenium WebDriver. Uh, yep, let's go to install and Selenium support packages as well. So as you can see, this is a development project at this point. I need to worry about package management. Obviously I need to worry about coding. So if you're not a developer, 
you're going to start having a, a bad time here. You'll be spending a lot of time Googling. Let's put it that way. Okay, so I got uh, selenium in there. Now, um, you know, the easiest thing to do for me would be just simply copy paste my steps in here. Now, to be fair, right, uh, what you really want to do here is build out your framework. You want to build a page object model framework. You want to, uh, you know, separate things out, make them very object oriented. Uh, however, that's too much work than we have time for on this webinar today. So I'm going to go again with the kind of easy approach and just simply copy paste the test I have from Selenium IDE right into my unit test here. Test fixture. Goes under the namespace there. Again, you have to know where to put things as well. So you have to be pretty well versed in development. Let's build, make sure it works. And I can't just run this through the test explorer at uh, the way it is right now. All right, I just copy pasted it from, uh, from Selenium IDE there. And one thing that it needs is basically uh, a path set to the Firefox driver. At the Gecko driver. So if I try to run it as is, I'm not going to have any love. And you'll see another big problem. This goes to reporting a little bit, so we're skipping a little bit ahead. That uh, I'm not going to get very good explanations as to why. Okay, I get nothing here really. Um, failed. Okay, so not really telling me too much. If I go to error list, you know the build was fine. Output was fine, but we just get failed. Now, this is one of those um, these holes you can fall into where you're going to spend a lot of time on Google, as I mentioned, figuring out, okay, what's wrong? I'll save you the, uh, the problem. I already talked about it, right? I need to point to Gecko Driver. And the easiest way to do that rather than typing it in here uh, is to simply add the Gecko Driver to my project. Uh, let's go to, where's add? There it is. Existing item. Now, this is kind of a cheater way of doing it, but it is the fastest and easiest. I'm just going to add the Gecko driver itself, the EXE, to my project. And more importantly, I'm going to change its properties to make sure to copy them to output, uh, copy it to output, so that the Gecko driver basically follows my, my test uh, library. Okay, now it will work. So let's give it a run. Now, as in work, I mean it will start up. As we know, we have issues with our object identification that we still need to fix. And that's where the pain really sets in. Uh, Ranorex has a independent spy tool, which is quite nice um, for identifying objects, seeing how you would identify objects. Uh, in Selenium, again, you need to rely on some kind of third party tool. Either you use the inspect tool built into the browser, use FirePath or uh, CrowPath or Firebug rather uh, in order to find the best locators and you know make your change. But we're talking about object repository here and this is where I really want to focus on that change is very very painful. Okay so again our test fails um, due to not being able to find the appropriate object and again we don't get very much information right. If we dig in here, deep, deep down, you'll find unable to locate element. So not terrible. Well, at least this uh, scroll bar makes it pretty terrible. Okay, and we know that what the reason is. Now here is where the object repository is so great in Ranorex. To fix this, I'm going to need to open Firefox up, get to my website here. sign in and then I'm going to need to inspect. Okay, so let's uh, open up our code inspector, our developer tools uh, window there. And I'm going to use the little grabber here. Sorry, it's being a little sluggish today for whatever reason. To grab onto my email field there. 
and yeah, this is what I have to do now. I have to parse through this and see, okay, is there something else I can use? Uh, looks like name is good, All right? We remember that's what Ranarex used automatically. So I don't have that uh, benefit. I have to go back into my code here, and let's say we're gonna change it to use the name. So I'm gonna copy that real quick, dump it in my code. Not only do I have to change the value, right? So I have to paste the new uh, value in there. I have to change the method by which I find it. So it's not gonna be by ID anymore, it's gonna be by name. Okay, and that's just fixing the click. Here is the key. That next action, right, use the exact same object. It's targeting that email field. So it has to be updated as well. And this is the disadvantage of a hard-coded, um, you know, uh, approach like this. So again, the, the, the right thing to do would be to create a page object model uh, to abstract these things away, okay? And that is, again, a lot of work, and it's not easy. You need to be a, a pretty good architect. Uh, you need to have everybody on board on the team that they all use the right naming conventions. Um, you know, it's, it's basically, it, you have to standardize it yourself. Now in Rander, actually you get the benefit of the object repository. All right, so if I'm looking at any module, I'll also see the object repository down here. If I wanna change how I identify this object, I don't have to come in here and type anything. I can use edit in spy. Okay, that's gonna pull up our spy tool. And I have a nice UI to work through. I don't have to worry about you know getting the wrong syntax, making a spelling error or something like that. Once the spy tool opens, we'll see Here's how we're identifying this page. And uh, yeah, so I could say, well, I don't want name, I want, um, I don't know, type. Now, obviously that's not a good choice, but <laughs> you get the idea, right? I could put, well, that's not too bad actually, type email. All right, I don't have to worry about writing the syntax. I can use this UI. Uh, once I make my change, I can re-query it again and make sure it works. And I get the search and I get instant feedback on what's found. So much more pleasant. And the most important part is that when I make that change, and I'm not gonna save this change because that's a, not a good idea. The path I got from Ranrex was already better. Uh, when I make that change, the important note is that it's gonna refactor everywhere that it's used. Okay, let's say this login email object was used in a hundred other modules, right? There's a million steps out there that use the login email uh, field in some way. Okay, now if there was a million steps in Selenium, I gotta go to each and every individual step the way it is now and update it. Okay, so again, I haven't built a page object model. In Ranarex, I make my changes. Right, let's just say I change the name here, for example, of the object. And if you look up here, everywhere it's used, so only two actions there, but we'll give you the right idea. Right, everywhere it gets updated. Now it's not so important for the name, the name's just there to tell you what it is, you can call it whatever you want, but that also works for the path. So it's a one-stop shop for maintenance. If I need to do any type of updating or maintenance on my automation, I do it in this global object repository, and you know, I don't have to worry about building that myself. So huge advantage, I can't stress it enough, but uh, let's continue on here. So we talked about the, uh, Managing objects with a repository, why that's such a big benefit in Ranarex, uh, that's part of our framework, right? You get it out of the box. Now, uh, in Selenium as well, another part of the framework you have to build besides the page object model is if you wanna do any data-driven testing, you have to create those harnesses. All right, now, I'm not gonna have time to show it in Selenium, just quite honestly, it's it's a, you know quite a bit of coding, but I will quickly show you that if I wanted to, right, if I wanted to develop a data-driven test. I got a little, you know, little article here to show you basically how to implement a data-driven framework. Okay, so in Ranarex, it's gonna be three steps. In Selenium, it's gonna be at least six. Now, here's my first problem I talked about. I looked this up, I just typed into Google, how do I implement data-driven framework in Selenium? And I get my answer here, but unfortunately it is for Java, right? It's it's the Java implementation of Selenium. So again, if I don't know what I'm doing here and I try to follow these steps, it, it's just not gonna work for me because I can't use 
the Apache POI library. That's a Java thing. So again, you're running into this problem where you really have to dig for the solution that you need. Uh, as you can see here, lots of dependencies. Uh, there we go. You need the JDK, you need the JRE, you need the Eclipse IDE, you need TestNG, you need a bunch of all the JAR files. And of course you need Microsoft because we're gonna use a, a spreadsheet here. But ultimately what it comes down to, right, and, and we just did a very simple example in this, in this uh, particular example, is ultimately it comes down to, again, hard coding. All right, you're hard coding a loop to go through a Excel document, and it truly is hard coded in that it's finding the cells based on their column location. Okay, so for example, if I add a new column to this data source in Excel, I'm gonna have to shift all these indexes down, all right? So there's a lot of maintenance that would have to happen as my data source changes, and you know, it's just more code, a lot more code to put in as well. So I'll leave it at that for Selenium. Let me show you how easy it is in Ranorex. I mentioned there's three steps. Uh, basically, let's 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 run the same test, but instead of running it um, for Ranorex Expert at Gmail, I'm going to come to this action where I type in my username and drop it down and create a variable instead. And I'm keeping an eye on the time, guys. I know we're a little over where we should be. I'm going to call that var username as my variable. And so I can parameterize my test through the UI here just by taking any action I want, dropping it down, and creating variables. You can do this for data entry. Uh, you can do this for expected values of your validations. Um, really anything can be data driven. But step one is set up those variables. Now step two is I'm gonna point this test case to my data source. So again, in code, you gotta do that through, you know, basically this chunk here using file streamer. And Radarex, I simply come here to the test case, right click, and I see data source. Give it a click. And I'm gonna to point to my Excel file, it's on my desktop. So we have lots of different ways to connect the data, lots of different formats. I can create a simple data table right here in Radarex. I can connect to a comma delimited file, an Excel spreadsheet, or even a database. And good luck with that in Selenium. You know, you're gonna to have to create your, uh, your own connection strings, and not only that, but at that point, you're also gonna to have to create your own um, SQL select statements, right? So you're gonna to need to know a little bit of SQL. Uh, Ranorex actually has a query builder. So even if you don't know SQL too well, uh, Ranorex holds your hand connecting to databases. Uh, anyway, little tangent there. We're gonna use a spreadsheet, so let's use the Excel connector. I have to give this thing a name, you know, my data. I'll call it, and I had to point to my file. So that's it, all through the UI, no need to code anything. I point to my uh, spreadsheet. I click copy and I click OK. That sets up that connection and that connection persists, right? So unlike my coded approach in Selenium, if I go back to my spreadsheet and I add an additional column in here, it's gonna live update that, okay? So again, through the UI, no need to write code. I have a connection to my little spreadsheet here. As you can see, I have two different usernames, two different passwords. All I need to do left, that's step two. All I have left is to data bind step three, which is right next door. And I'm kind of flying through this pretty quickly, guys, because we do have a webinar just on this topic alone. But I just wanted to show you how easy it is. Three steps, variables, data source, data binding, you're done. Okay, now this very same test will iterate twice. It's gonna log in with the first user and then log in with the second user. This will actually create looping behavior inside of Ranorex here. So if I run my test, we'll see it log in with you know, user one, we'll see the very same steps go through with user two. So rather than, uh, you know, adding a whole bunch of dependencies, writing a whole bunch of code. I basically have three clicks uh, to get this going. Okay, our test is kicking off. Ooh, I see the question of, can I encrypt the Excel file and, and load the data automatically every time the test runs? 
It is possible. Um, just to be quite honest, that will require some coding um, to decrypt. All right, we just deal with uh, you know your standard vanilla spreadsheets in general. Uh, but that's another point that you know a lot of people say, well, I'm probably going to have to do code anyway, so why not go to Selenium? Ranarex will get 90% of your scenarios out of the way without touching code at all. Our recorder is quite good. Again, I know it's got kind of a bad connotation to it, the, the word recorder, uh, but it's quite good in Ranarex as you see here uh, compared to Selenium anyway. Uh, so that gets you 90% of the way. And then there's a lot of power under the hood. So uh, the Ranarex you know, framework is built on .NET, and so you have the whole .NET framework available to you. Uh, you can add any type of uh, .NET package, you know, we have customers who are using, uh, you know, card spoofers and to get through their uh, purchasing scenarios and things like that. Uh, so there is room for, you know, developers as well in Ranarex. You can uh, you can write code for whatever you want, honestly. But when we don't have to, let's not, right? Code is harder to maintain over time. It's harder to look at. Let's stick with something easy, right? There's our first iteration of our test here, and here comes our second. So now we'll use a different username and password. Oh good, I see the question. If we have more than one user in our Excel file, how is that data used row-wise? Well, a great way to think about it is that the number of rows you have basically equals the number of iterations, right? The number of times this test case is going to loop. Uh, so, you know, if you add a new user, that just means that this test case is going to run three separate times. Now, if you watch here, you'll see that it inputs different values. Now, I know the password you can't really see, but just trust me, it is a different password. And you can obviously see the different user there. But we uh, we kept one test, we recorded one test, and now we have the ability through data driving to basically run this scenario over an infinite amount of usernames and passwords. Just as a, a simple example. You can data drive pretty much anything you want. Here comes our sign out. And we're good to go. So, as you can see, data driving your test couldn't get much simpler than that. We get our report here. Obviously, the most important parts really are things like did we were we able to log in correctly? All right, we did see that success in our validation. And that brings me to my final topic here with reporting. Uh, this is another thing that in Selenium. You have to build yourself. You have to build your own reporting framework. Now, if you go with a testing framework like InUnit, uh, TestNG, whatever it may be, right, they have some pretty rudimentary reporting built in. Uh, that's typically in like the JUnit format or something like that. It's like looking at a stack trace, right? It's like what we just saw in, in Visual Studio there, failed to find element. Uh, you know, it's not really telling us too much about what went wrong. Um, now, there's more reporting you can uh, include, right? Just like anything else, you have to build it yourself. But uh, in general, you're going to get a stack trace. In Ranarex, you get this full-blown report. It's very, very easy to um, share. It comes in multiple formats. It can be in HTML. It can be in um, JUnit format. It can be in PDF format. We even have automatic emailing available. Uh, so one of the most important parts of testing, of course, is your report. And it just comes right out of the box in Ranarex. Now, one really, really cool thing in that same vein of thought I want to show is not only can you get reports, but if you come here to your test suite properties and go to the report tab, you could even have Ranrex create a video of your uh, test, your test run. So down here, there's a video reporting. If I click OK, I'm going to run this again just uh, very quickly here. And we'll uh, see that video. Let's go ahead and just to save time here, I'm going to limit my data source back down to one so that I'm not running both iterations. I'm only going to run the first row. So we're not waiting the whole time. All 
Now I know we are uh, coming up on our, our time here. Um, I do want to definitely have some time for Q&A, so bear with me. We'll extend a little bit here if you can. Those of you who have a hard stop, I apologize. Of course, you can definitely reach out to us and have any questions answered if you can't stick around for the Q&A. There was one more example I wanted to show, though, before we got into the questions and answers, but hopefully you guys have been noticing, right, the the speed at which we can build a test in Ranorex. We don't have to worry about um, fixing things that the Selenium IDE recorder couldn't do correctly. And that's really important uh, on the long term, right? Uh, from a maintenance perspective, in Selenium, you're going to be editing code. Even if you implement a page object model, at the end of the day, you're going to be editing code. So, uh, you know, you need developers. And there's lots of people on the QA team who probably aren't developers, right? You have business analysts, you have testers. Uh, you know, Ranorex is a tool that even a manual tester could pick up and start using. You, you basically just need a little technical savvy and, of course, a little bit of uh, training, right? Some some YouTube videos or one of these webinars, for example, and you should be well on your way uh, to creating a healthy automation on day one. And that's really the key. Day one in Selenium, you're going to basically spend that setting things up. All right, shorter test here, so let's let it play, and we are at time. I did want to show one more quick example uh, of a limitation on Selenium that works great in Ranorex. So give me a, an additional minute for that. But I did want to show this uh, report is just the uh, tip of the iceberg, right? You also can get video reporting, which uh, developers love, by the way. Right, if you do one of our integrations, like integration to Jira, that uh, you know will allow Ranorx to create a bug automatically, and it will actually attach the report and the video to that bug. And you know, as they say, a picture is worth a uh, thousand words. Well, a video is worth a thousand pictures, so do the math. <laughs> and there you go. Now attached to my report, and it is its own independent file as well, so I can send it out that way if I need to. There we go. We've got a video of our test run. So if something went wrong. We will see in real time, you know, basically what happened. Super cool feature. I am uh, really love that one. But let's uh, escape here. <laughs> well, that is the, uh, <laughs> I was trying to click the uh, Firefox X there, not the video X. Okay, the one quick example I wanted to show you guys is how easy it is to build up a new test real fast, particularly when, um, you know, when you don't, want to start from scratch. So let me go back to Dropbox here. I already kind of uh, set up right, the next test case where we're going to upload a document. How do I do that? Well, I basically need to add in between login and logout, I need to add a new module. I already have steps to login and log out. I just needed steps to upload. And the reason I'm showing this is that you may find that you have a scenario like this in your application that Selenium would be able to handle. Let me get logged in here so I can start recording in the middle. I'll go ahead and log in there. Right now I could have, uh, I'm doing it manually here just to save time, but what I could have done is run my test to here, excluding this selection, and you know have Randomx do the steps for me to get me to that point. Once I'm at this point, and I want to start recording my upload module here. I'm going to do some steps. So let's click on all files here to get to our kind of file view. And let's click on upload. Apologies being a little sluggish. Not helping with our time very much. <laughs> All right, there goes the upload files. I'm going to click that, and here is where, if I tried to do this in Selenium, I would be lost. Because this is going to pop open a Windows Explorer, right, a prompt. Uh, now, this is outside of the web. This is actually desktop technology here, and Selenium will not recognize it. So many of you, I'm sure, have ran into this if you've used Selenium. Uh, anything like uploading a document, verifying you downloaded a document, using your favorites, using your bookmarks, Notice that Ranorex can see all that stuff up there because uh, it is just desktop objects. Uh, because Ranorex can do web, desktop, and mobile, you can actually switch on the fly. 
So if I wanted to upload this document, all right, notice I get the red border there. I give it a click to highlight it. I get a red border on open. I give it a click to do that. You know, obviously I validated at this point. Make sure it uploaded. So I click my validate button. Okay, I'm going to try to speed things up here. Don't want to go too fast. We saw that. <laughs> That's the reason I'm a little bit behind, right? Is that I went a little too fast on my initial recording. All right, let's validate that the file exists and then we'll quickly delete it. So we validate that that exists. Maybe that it has the right name and everything. And then we delete it. Now to save time, I'm not gonna run it back, but I'm just gonna show you the actions, right? And show you that we were able to switch. We were able to transition from web to desktop on the fly and what that looks like. Last action, confirm my deletion. Always a good practice, right? You you do something, you test it, and then you clean up after yourself. That's just good automation practice in general. Let's stop our recording here. And there's my eight steps to uh, upload. Now, if you watch, if I go through these actions, right, you can see the storyboard there. We click all files, we click upload, and then boom, I'm in Windows Explorer now. And you can see that uh, Rainworks didn't care, right? It's just another object to us, desktop, mobile, web. It doesn't matter. It's just a UI. So these types of end-to-end -end scenarios where maybe you have to jump from web to your mobile app or to your desktop app, you can just do it naturally. You don't have to worry about setting up Appium or setting up Winium, WinApp driver, uh, you know, other solutions that you need uh, if you wanted to go the open source route. So that's my spiel, guys. Um, hopefully you saw the value here of having all these different framework components included with you know, your install. And again, that's a very quick install. You just download it, install it, and you, you got everything you need. No need to configure anything like there is on the uh, Selenium side. So a quick summary, as you know, what we just saw there, we, um, you know, saw the workflow, how, uh, you know, Selenium, at least the recording aspect of it, kind of fell on its face uh, immediately. So again, that's going to be a, a code only approach in Selenium. You can kind of cheat with the uh, recorder, but it's just not very good, as opposed to a codeless approach in RANREX. Identifying, that's, again, the most important part, in my opinion. Um, you saw that using the recorder. I had a lot of broken stuff, and if I export that to code and add it to my framework, now I had to fix it, you know, not only line by line, but for uh, all of the mistakes that it had, which there was a lot of them in there. On top of that, right, I have an object repository in Ranorex and in Selenium. I had to build that myself. Right? I had to build my own framework, which is more work, more development time. Same thing with data-driven testing, three steps in Ranorex, uh, you know, countless hours potentially in lines of code in Selenium. And finally, reporting. You get uh, multiple formats, nice flashy reports, which, by the way, you can customize all you want. You can change the font, the color, add your logo, whatever you want to do. And it comes in multiple formats, and you can even get video reporting. So all that built in, all that stuff that uh, you can't get from Selenium, definitely not out of the box. And even building it on your own is a challenge. So that's my summary. I'm going to get to the Q&A section here. I see a lot of great questions have come in. But uh, feel free. I know we went over. I apologize for that. Uh, feel free to follow up uh, with us. You'll get an email to download this recorded video. So we did record the whole session. If you want to ask a question, um, you know, maybe you want to follow up with us or get a demo, uh, feel free to reply to that email and we'll get in contact with you. So let's open it up for uh, questions and answers. Um, oh, I got one prompt that somebody lost audio. Hopefully not everybody lost audio. Doesn't look like it. Oh, I see a question here real quick. Uh, is the session recorded? I think I just answered that. Yes. So you, if you missed the beginning, don't worry. You will get, uh, you'll get it all. And that should, you know, it takes uh, usually about a couple of hours, but definitely by business, uh, into business tomorrow, you'll have it in your inbox. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna go ahead and 
look through the questions here, but uh, Mubin, Josh, did you guys see any that were uh, particularly interesting that the whole audience might like to hear? Hi, Jay. Yes, sir. Um, we flagged a couple in there for you. If you want to take a look at those, we'll go ahead and finish looking at everything's coming through now. Great. Yeah, I see a couple good ones here. Oh, so Russell has a great question. I missed part of the webinar. Maybe you already covered this. How do you control timing between the actions where a page has to load before you click an element? Yes, that does happen naturally out of the box. Um, so why not? While, while, I'm, while I'm here, I might as well run my uh, test again. Remember, I built a new test case just by recording a few additional steps and reusing what I already had. Log in, log out, for example. Let's, uh, let's run that new test case. You know, let's also reuse our data source. Why not? So everything's reusable on RANRX. That's the beauty of it. Everything's already object oriented, plug and play. Now, how many buzzwords can I spit out? Let's see. <laughs> let's uh, let's run this and, and you'll see while it's running that basically what RANRX does is it has a timeout behavior, All right? So it will always wait for your object to be available. And that doesn't mean just existing. It, it means, you know, rendered fully in the DOM which is an important distinction actually, uh, because there are both implicit and explicit weights in Selenium. You have to implement those yourself, of course, like everything else, uh, but sometimes they are still too fast. Maybe they're only seeing that the object exists and it's not fully rendered. Uh, what you'll see in RANREX, right? Uh, this is a, the very beginning here is a perfect example, actually. It's gonna open the browser real quick and then we're gonna look for the sign in button which takes some time to actually uh, to render here. So you can see there searching for item sign in and you see it's counting up to a minute and a half. Now if it reaches that minute and a half and uh, you know, we never see the sign in button. Now I forgot to sign out, so <laughs> it's never gonna see the sign in button, but that's perfect actually, because you can see, right, that it's waiting. Now notice as soon as I, um, as soon as I do what was supposed to happen here, and let me, oh, I got to sign out, of course. Getting ahead of myself there. So let's sign out. And still, you can see that it's still waiting, right? So in the Radarex's, uh mind, maybe this page is just really slow to load. Okay, but once I, uh, once I bring us back to the appropriate page here, I don't know why my Firefox browser is being so darn slow. I wasn't doing that before I got on the GoToWebinar. Maybe it's GoToWebinar. <laughs> as soon as I load the page that it's supposed to be at, you'll see it catch on to uh, the thing it needs to, to interact with. If I did in time, it may have already timed out. Hopefully not. But yeah, basically the answer is that uh, it happens naturally. There you go, you saw it. So yeah. Just imagine that page had, had taken uh, 45 seconds to load for whatever reason. Uh, RANREX always, always, always waits for your objects before it interacts with them. That's a, a really, actually a huge uh, benefit. Let's see, are there any other good questions? Hopefully that answers your question. Oh, <laughs> RANREX is stealing the mouse for me. Let's, let's go ahead and cancel our test here. Hopefully you saw that waiting behavior. That made sense. Ah, is there any tool to migrate existing Selenium tests into RANREX? Not a tool per se, um, but if you happen to, if you happen to have your Selenium test written in C Sharp, uh, then it will play nicely with RANREX. Uh, basically, how that works is that you're going to add the class file. Again, it has to be C Sharp. So let's go back to our login logout. This guy, right? This uh, exported Selenium test. Uh, I can import this into RANREX just naturally. Okay, so the way I do that is go to the project here, go to add existing item. Again, it has to be in C Sharp, so there's my uh, .cs. I'm going to copy it, not link it, because then there's a dependency there. Okay, now it's in my project, and the one thing you'll have to do is kind of build a little wrapper. So it is natively recognized in here. We just need RANREX to kick it off. So for that, and, and by the way, you will have to add your references, just like in Visual Studio IDE. You'll have to add your Selenium WebDriver stuff. OK, 
Okay, so make sure you have that and support. And then you have to kick it off with a um, you have to kick it off with a what's called a Vanerex code module. So like a recording module, this is basically just a keyword. You know, kick off Selenium test. And yeah, so you're going to use the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you also have to add the in unit reference because you're going to kick it off using in unit. Uh, so you do have to build a little bit of a wrapper, but, and it does have to be in C sharp, but you can actually import those um, directly. Now, you know, on the other hand, if it's not in C sharp, you know, um, there's other conversion tools out there that could possibly work for you. Uh, you know, Ranorex does things a lot differently. So I, I get this question a lot, is Ranorex based on Selenium? It's actually not. So we have our own our own framework here, right? It's completely original. It is not uh, a Selenium wrapper like some tools are. Um, so while it does work as long as they're the same code base, uh, you do have to build this little wrapper to basically kick it off separately. Hopefully it gives you the idea. Um, yeah, if you, if you do have uh, existing Selenium tests, let us know. Get in, get in contact with us, and we can even do a, uh, you know, a guided, uh, a guided import, a guided migration, if you will. Uh, again, another big benefit of a commercial tool, right, is you got your support team. We have uh, U.S.-based engineers. You even get a, a support phone number, so you're not just relying on Google anymore. I see most questions were answered here. Let's see. Ah, if I only have one runner license, can I uh, can I start simultaneous tests during multiple virtual browser instances? So one thing that's different from Ranrex and Selenium, uh, which you know there's pros and cons to it, is that we use the actual browser. So Selenium uses what are called the driver browsers, basically. Um, they are separate. So you know just on its face value, you know you're running a Selenium test. You're not running actually against the the same browser that the user is going to be using right they are technically different now they do a pretty good job of keeping them up to date um, so that you know the firefox driver works the same way the firefox browser should uh, however that is up to the open source community right um, again instead of relying on a commercial tool where we have that uh, monetary incentive right to keep developing and keep things uh, compatible um, there's a lot of things that you have to rely on uh, the open source community for when you go with Selenium. That's not to say they don't do a good job. Um, they do, but you know, there have been uh, historical instances where uh, you know bugs were introduced and, and testing is down because of uh, some open source bugs. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I, I kind of got on a tangent there. You're asking about the parallel testing. Yes, uh, so if you were here for the whole time, you might've heard me say that really the end result of your Ranorex test is just an exe file so dropbox test.exe uh, now if i want to kick this off in parallel the easiest approach right would be to create a quick batch file and you know without getting overly complicated here um, you can des designate what are called ranorex agents so in ranorex you have this uh, view remote panel this basically allows you to um, on different machines set up what's called a Ranorex agent and you could point your test run to that machine. Uh, now let's say I want to run 10 tests in parallel. I would have 10 agents and you know the, the easiest uh, approach or the easiest explanation would be I create a batch file which starts this uh, 10 separate times and using command line argument I point each um, each of those 10 starts to a different agent. So you do have to build up a little bit more on your own. Um, you know, in Selenium, it's the same thing, right? You have to build what's called a Selenium grid. Now, I'll be honest, parallel testing is a bit more straightforward in uh, in Selenium because they they kind of designed it that way, uh, right, to use the, the grid uh, technology. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're going to have to do work either way, whether you go Selenium or you go Ranorex. Uh, it's just a difference of either you're building a grid or you're building a a scheduler, like a batch file, for example, or even better, you use a tool like a, a CI CD tool like Jenkins or Azure DevOps uh, to kick off those parallel tests. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, yeah, that's one thing I, I will be honest about, right, is that Selenium is uh, designed with 
parallelism in mind. And Ranorex is too, but uh, both require a little bit of work. And I see the question uh, here, Mario. Um, can Ranorex use the Selenium grid? So that's an interesting, uh, an interesting question. I, I did mention just uh, recently, right, that Ranorex is its own thing. It's not actually built on Selenium. Having said that, there is a there is a very interesting feature here uh, that supports most steps anyway. Now there, you know, I'll be honest, there can be some flakiness to it, but we have the ability to create what are called endpoints. Okay, and what's happening here is that I can connect. You, you probably saw it on our website, which is probably why you're asking the question. I can connect to a Selenium server, whether it's um, a standalone server, whether it's a grid, or whether it's one of the cloud providers like Sauce Labs or Browser Stack. And I can actually run this test uh, through those endpoints. What's actually happening here is it's converting my Ranorex stuff, my Ranorex code, basically into Selenium code on the fly. Again, it's not written in Selenium. Um, you know, all this, uh, let me quickly show you the code underneath everything. It's all our own API, our own uh, implementation here. Uh, so, you know, it, it's basically converting Ranorex code into Selenium code on the fly. And that's why there can be a little bit of flakiness here if you're doing anything too complex. Uh, but certain tests, right, smoke tests and things like that, you should actually be able to port those through um, a web driver endpoint. And then you get all the advantages of, you know, uh, a grid and, and the parallelism of Selenium without any of the, the downsides. Yeah, someone would like to see it. All right, why not? <laughs> let's do it. Uh, let's go ahead and I need to kick off a, a quick Selenium server here. I'll just do it locally. I haven't uh, haven't logged into my um, Sauce Labs or anything in, in a couple couple days. So, uh, whoops, my caps lock is on somehow. Okay, let's start this server up. Oh, oh um, did I type it too quickly? There we go, just wanted the jar, one of the dot jar at the end there. Okay, Selenium server running on port 444. We see that endpoint becomes alive. Basically, you know, in this view, you'll point to that endpoint. And, uh, you know, I know it's not going to be able to do the upload document test because, again, that uses desktop technology in it. Um, so let's stick with just the login logout. So, again, there are some things you can't do, right? Anytime you exit the browser, anything, anytime you're doing anything not web, obviously that can't be translated to Selenium code. And let's see it kick off here. Oh, okay, let's see. <laughs> yeah, it's mad because I added this. Uh, Selenium, but I haven't added any of the dependencies. So let's quickly get that out of there. All right. Should have known that would cause a build error. And here we go. We should see it kick off. And you'll actually see it in the Firefox driver now, not the Firefox browser. So you'll notice the difference right away, probably. And again, this is uh, adding some benefits because I can now use a Selenium grid if I want to. Um, you know, it's also headless. So yeah, pretty neat. You get anything too complex, you, you might uh, might get some potential issues, but your typical um, smoke type tests will will be fine usually. No, it's a matter about my Gecko driver version. Um, you know, let me quickly try another server that I know I stood up already. It's something about the version of my driver and the version of Selenium. And there you go. You're, you're already seeing it, right? That uh, These are the kinds of things that can happen uh, when you have so much dependency going on. 
things can break. And when one thing, one thing breaks, it, it can potentially break a lot of other things as well. Um, so, you know, this test is not going to be able to even kick off there. Let me end the Selenium server that I have open and open up this other one. Again, it's compatibility nightmare sometimes in Selenium. Different driver versions go to different standalone servers, and yeah, it's a nightmare. All the more reason to go with something like Ranrex. So let's kick off this guy, which I know is configured correctly for the Gecko driver capability. All right, it should kick on here. I told you to stop. <laughs> okay, Selenium server up and running. Our test is aborting here. And let's try it off with the uh, uh, this particular have the appropriate capability set up. Oh, test is still technically running. Let's let it. Finish there. Boy, I'm getting a lot of slowdown today. For some reason, I should have restarted my computer, I guess, before my webinar. That probably would have been a good idea. Something's making it angry, isn't it? System interrupts, huh? Yeah, I usually blame GoToMeeting. <laughs> Quite a memory hog. All right, well, would give it the benefit of the doubt here, but I don't want too much awkward silence. <laughs> let's um, let's go ahead and kill it. I don't even know that it's a uh, studio that's causing the hangup, but. Maybe killing it will uh, get things going again here. I should probably close Visual Studio as well. That's also quite heavy on memory. Let's get rid of all these guys. Let's do some cleanup. And Visual Studio, you go away. Yeah, sure, why not? We'll save it. <laughs> All right, that's looking a little bit better, but not too much better. Yeah, I see some other questions here while that's going. Yeah, it looks like um, Josh and Mubita have done a great job answering those via the chat window, so thanks, guys. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Stuck down there. Let's open our Dropbox test up there. Yeah, some people are, are, are having to leave. Um, I appreciate you guys staying a little over if you were interested in the questions. I uh, hope you enjoy the webinar. Yeah, I'll, I'll still answer this question while it's loading, though. I do want to, you know, formally thank everyone. So if you do have a hard stop, um, thank you so much for attending. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to, again, reply to that follow-up email with any questions or, or feedback you might have. Uh, so thanks, and have a great rest of the week. But for those who can stay, maybe you're uh, eating lunch while you're watching. Let's uh, let's take a look at trying that again here. My local server's up. It should have the right capability. And we'll give it a run. Yeah, I'm kind of glad you asked the question as well because I set it up uh, this week, right? Uh, I used the newest jar from Selenium, the newest Gecko driver, and uh, whatever reason, my endpoint setup is oh, interesting. Well, whatever reason, I've uh, somehow <laughs> I've somehow put things into a, a strange state. Um, so yeah, fortunately, uh, looks like that's not going to happen, but uh, it does work. Try it out for yourself. It's actually pretty neat because uh, it is, like I said, 
actually converting Ranorex code to Selenium code, which is pretty cool. All right, any others? Uh, doesn't look like it, and since we're coming up at half past, um, I think it's a good time to officially wrap things up. Again, guys, feel free to reach out at any point. Uh, if you like what you saw today uh, with how easy Ranorex is to use, give us a try. Um, you have a trial version at your disposal. It's fully supported, so also, um, you know, test us out there as well. You'll see how good the support is. In my opinion, that alone is uh, enough reason to go with a commercial tool. It's like you get a, uh, you know, a force multiplier. You get a couple extra engineers on your team. All right, with that having been said, uh, thanks again, guys, and hope you have a great rest of your week. Take care, and hopefully I'll see you on the next webinar. Bye, everyone.